So like, real question, are there any witches that can create food out of thin air? Hey everyone, it's Maddie, and this is my first book blog ever. Vlog. So for starters, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. First fact about me you need to know is I am not good with technology. Like, at all. My freshman year of high school, I tried to create a book blog on like the internet or whatever and it was a disaster. I totally forgot the password. Didn't really know how to upload anything. Pretty sure it was like a block site or something. It, it was a mess. So I thought four years later as a senior, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel because it kind of seemed like the thing to do. I'm much more vocal about my opinions and it's just easier to put all my angst and fangirl in video. Anyway, I am 17 years old and I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I also have three younger brothers and two dogs. Also behind me is my bookshelf and I'm super excited about it. It's color coded. It's like red, orange, yellow. Then we have like a break because I don't know where to put these books. And then it goes like purple, green, blue, white, black. It's beautiful. It's just so, I, I love my books. They're my babies and just seeing them look so pretty behind me gives me such joy. Moving on to why you're all actually here. The books. I will be reviewing the Grisha series. All three books kind of briefly telling you guys a little synopsis of what goes on and then I'm going to be moving into my discussion on the book as a whole. The first book in the series is Shadow and Bone. So I initially picked up this series because I was at Barnes & Noble looking for books that were similar to some of Sarah J Maas's books or Cassandra Clare's. Um, I wanted a little bit of fantasy with romance, but it's not like overdone fantasy. And then I went on Goodreads and there weren't like a ton of great responses, but I was still like, you know what, what the heck, it sounds fun. Was not disappointed. Oh my gosh, I've actually just finished the last book in the series and it is amazing. I loved every single book in the series. I love the characters. I love the plot. I love how the Grisha powers are explained really thoroughly. I love how the characters are all rounded out, like developed. It was just super duper good. <laughs> so to break it down for you, basically there are two types of people, the humans and the Grishas. The humans are like all you regular unmagical power people, while the Grishas are witches that contain different sets of skills. And then there's me, of course, a shadow hunter. But that's a different series altogether. <laughs> so the story follows these two kids, Mal and Elena, who grew up in an orphanage together. Mal is a tracker and soldier, while Elena is a map maker who doesn't really seem to fit in anywhere. The point of view is from our leading lady, Elena, who actually didn't irritate me as main character. So these two are in a training camp for a war that's occurring and are practicing and building up their endurance to cross the fold. Basically the fold is no man's land. It's, you don't want to be there. It's not good. It's this shadowed sea with Volcra lurking in the air, but you can't really see it because it's super dark. And the Volcra will kill whoever tries to cross it. The situation is not ideal. Anyway, when Mal and Elena are put on the ship to cross the fold, Surprise, surprise, the Volcra attack. Anyway, turns out Elena is a Grisha and one that's very rare called a Sun Summoner, which basically means she can, like, summon light. When she finds out that she's a Sun Summoner, she saves the crew, but it's honestly the turning point in the book because, you know what, she shouldn't be a Grisha. Then this character, the Darkling, is introduced, and he wants to basically kidnap Elena. Sure, he wants to use her to, like, help save the country and all of that, but if she doesn't want to go, that is called kidnapping. Also, another problem I have with this character is he's referred to as the Darkling. Like, that's not a name. That is a title. It's irritating to me. <laughs> anyway, when he does kidnap her, he takes her to this palace where she begins training as a witch. And while all this training is occurring, the Darkling's kind of cleaning her up from that orphan soldier she was to the society standard of what a Grisha should be. And while all this is going on, he's like, Psst, Elena, I've got a plan. Mm. Because you sound so trustworthy, whispering behind your hand like I don't see it. Really, Darkling? Anyway, the story is really good with a bunch of really huge plot twists that even I didn't see coming. 
So basically, if you're at this little part of the video, you want to hear about the second book. And by wanting to hear about the second book, it is assumed you have read the first book. The second book is Siege and Storm. And yes, there is a barcode here. This is my library's copy. So Madalena managed to escape only to be captured and kidnapped again by, surprise, surprise, you guessed it, the Darkling. He's back and has this new power. Basically, when you use Grisha power, it strengthens you because it's a part of you. However, the Darkling's new power does not allow that to happen. It actually weakens him. And that new power is bringing forth soldiers, like, from his body. It's these dark, shadowed creatures that don't really die from a gunshot to the head. Also, the Darkling is hunting another amplifier for Elena, which kind of goes against everything that the Grishas know, because you should only be able to have one amplifier, but she's about to get two. This hunting is actually done on a pirate ship, so that's kind of where the beginning of the story takes place. And throughout reading, this second book, I actually caught on to a lot of Star Wars similarities, which I don't know if that was intended or what was going on with that. The captain of the pirate ship, Sturmhond, is how I think you say it. And he reminded me a lot of Han Solo in the beginning. To do anything for money, right, wrong, it didn't matter. All that mattered was the money. However, by saying this, I really did like the captain of the book and the twins that were introduced, Toyla and Tamar who were members of his crew. But to tie in other Star Wars references throughout the story, you also hear more about the Darkling and kind of his past. And he reminded me a lot of Kylo Ren from Star Wars in the sense that he, like, whined about wanting to be the bad guy. He's like, oh no, I can't, I am evil, you can't save me. Like, what? Stop crying. If you want to be evil, be evil, but be evil, like, an evil person would be, not some whiny four-year-old that needs to be put to bed. Anywho, later on throughout the story, she manages to escape the Darkling. And by escaping the Darkling, she plans to lead the Grisha, or Second Army, against the Darkling. So when Elena and Mal manage to escape the Darkling with the twins and the captain of the ship, turns out the captain of the ship is actually the bastard son of the king. And the group of them make their way to the little palace once again. However, now that Elena has returned and all that bad stuff with the Darkling that happened in the first book, she is seen as a saint, which starts to cause tension and trouble between her and her man. And so I don't want to summarize the whole story, but basically the book surrounds the idea of them training to defeat the Darkling and there's a war quote-unquote, at the end of the book, but not like the main war. There's just a big battle. Moving on to the third book now. Prepare yourself. Also, side note, I took the Goodreads synopsis off this one, so because when I was creating my little script for what I was going to read to you guys, I hadn't fully completed it and I wanted to make sure I didn't skip any of the good details. But when talking about the third book, I want to start by saying that I hadn't even made it to page one and I knew this book was going to break my heart. And when I say I haven't made it to page one, let me tell you why. It's because the dedication said, quote, for my father, Harv, some heroes don't make it to the end, unquote. I'm sorry, I literally, like, wanted to cry from that break my heart part 367. The capital has fallen. The Darkling rules from his shadowed throne. Now, the nation's fate rests with a broken sun sumner, a disgraced tracker, and the shattered remains of a once great magical army. Ew, dramatic! Basically what happens is Elena is taken underground where the parent is trying to manipulate her into his version of what the country should look like, but she's like, nah nah bro, no, I want to go to the surface, I need the sun, I can't summon my powers down here, and he's like, no no, it's dangerous, the Darkling will capture you and kill you, also I'll kill your friends if you try to leave. Oh yeah, total great teamwork. So basically, in order for Elena to escape, she has to forge some new alliances with characters that she didn't really like particularly in the beginning, and she's going to have to put aside old rivalries. When she escapes, 
she's on the hunt for the Firebird, which is the last of the three amplifiers that would give her more power over the Darkling. So I'm going to real quick summarize the three main characters and my analysis of them, Mal, Elena, and the Darkling. So Mal, let me just say in every story, there's the typical three different types of tropes that can happen. The girl and the bad boy, the girl and the boy next door slash best friend, or the girl and charismatic playboy. So Mal's basically the second option where he is the friend slash boy next door. I didn't know how I felt about that. I actually really enjoyed him as a character in the first book, but then he became a dick by the end. And in the second book, all he kind of did was whine and complain and drown his sorrows. Like, he became somewhat of like an alcoholic in the sense, because he's like, I can't be with you, Elena. And frankly, it was just really annoying. But by the third book, he broke my heart because he's distant. It's kind of like there are different stages of grief. Like, there's like the denial, the anger, which is kind of the second book. By the third book, it's like acceptance, but he's like distancing himself so he doesn't get hurt. Which pisses me off. Like, come on. Get together, guys. Stop playing games. But then when Ma leaves to hunt the Firebird, instead of the rewards that Nikolai is offering him, he says, quote, I don't need any of that. Just deserve her, unquote, page 237. Like, F me up, what the heck? Like, the number one thing that I love but I hate, like, I love because it's so sweet but I hate because it pisses me off, is when guys are selfless. Like, no, Mal, be selfish. Want Elena. She wants you to want her. You just need to stop being difficult and distant. Like, she wants you. You want her. Why are you both walking in opposite directions. I don't get it. And then we move on to Elena. I actually really enjoyed her as a character. Usually I tend to find things about the main character that really, really irks my soul or bothers me. They're overly emotional or they're too stoic and unemotional or they're just plain not relatable. But I didn't get that feeling with Elena as a character. She makes mistakes and I felt I was able to relate to her. Sure, I didn't grow up in an orphanage or join the army, but her personality seemed to match with mine pretty dead on. She's just a really enjoyable character because you see her grow from this shy girl orphan who never really felt like she understood to slowly building up her confidence to finally having a place in the world and knowing where she belongs and being the strong, confident, fearless, powerful queen slash leader. And I just think that was such a great message because it took a lot of struggle and hard work to find where she is and who she was meant to be, but when it came down to it, she was able to do that. And now moving on to the Darkling. So I want to first start by saying we don't learn his actual name to like the middle of the third book. Like it's so weird how he doesn't have a name. Like I can get it from a literary standpoint that she wanted to see make him appear less human or that the Darkling doesn't have a name because it can relate to other people in our lives. But really, really the Darkling? Like honestly, I want to punch him in the face. Point is, he acts like he's misunderstood when in reality that's not the case. He's a drama queen baby that should have died eons ago. As he gets older, you would think logically that he would mature. But no, not the Darkling. And his name's the Darkling, for God's sake. He's such a cliche, emo piece of poop. And in the third book, he is so angry. Like, all of the time. The only thing about his character that was very conflicted with is that he seemed to love Elena. And by loving her, it kind of made me difficult to hate him. But then I was like, wait, he's a murderer. Right, right, quick, we had to do that quick check. Yep, he's a murderer. Don't like him still. I don't care that in the middle of the third book, the author decided to give him a name. You are still an evil piece of crap. You are the gum on the bottom of my shoe that I scrape off on a sidewalk. And the Darkling, he treats Elena like property. He's like, I'm gonna hunt you down and make you mine. Like he literally physically puts a collar around her neck. As a feminist, I have an issue with this. I do not think that his insecurities or whatever the hell is going on should play such a role in his life 
Like, his relationship with people in general sucks. Oh, and then he's, like, sending her a quick brain message, like, hey, I'm crossing the fold, and I'm coming for you. LOL, I hope you get torn to bits and drown. I'm a lifeguard, and I will watch you sink. So there were a lot of themes and elements in the story that were going on that I actually did end up recording, but if I put the whole thing together, my video would have been over 30 minutes, and that seems super long for a first video. My final note is that on a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate this book an 8 and 8 and a half. It was an amazing story. I loved the adventure. I loved the characters. I loved pretty much everything about it. It's not my top series because that spots for the mortal instruments, but it was really good nonetheless. I would definitely recommend. I know some people say it's not as good as Six of Crows. I haven't really gotten there yet, so I can't really give you a judgment based on that, but I really, really enjoyed it. Anyway, if you liked what I had to say, go down below and give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't like what I had to say, just don't subscribe, I guess. I don't know. Or do, because I post some interesting stuff. I obviously have a bunch of books on my bookshelf that I would love to review. Anyway, thank you for bearing with me with my first video. You all are amazing and please leave some comments below about books you'd like to see me review or anything else. Peace out from Jace Herondale.